Hi, third grade. We are going to get started today with um, our October spooky project. But we're going to take a little bit of what we just learned with our James Rizzi project in making pop outs, and we are going to make a pumpkin pop out too. So you're going to start with a half a sheet of paper and you're going to fold it in half just like you did for the James Rizzi City project. I'm going to open it back up and I'm not going to make my cuts quite yet. I thought it'd be a little bit easier um, if I did the artwork first and then made the cuts. So I want to make my background sky look kind of like Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night painting. This was painted in 1889, over a hundred years ago, and it is still one of the most famous paintings in the world. If you want to go see it, you can go to New York City. I was able to stand in front of this painting, and I was able to get pretty close to it. So I'm going to take some of the, uh, the moon, the stars, the swirling sky, I'm going to take those things and put them into my background too. I want you to use any of the materials that you have at your house. I am going to be using crayons and watercolor paints today. But if you don't have watercolor paints, you could use markers, color pencils, crayons, whatever you have available. I know some of you have oil pastels also at your house. So use the materials you have. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a moon in my sky and Van Gogh, he had a crescent moon when he painted Starry Night. I think I'd like to create my own moon and I'm going to have a full moon. I'm going to put it over on the left side just to kind of make mine a little bit different. Put the craters in there. Now you can see that there are all these little dashed lines around the stars in the moons that represent the light emanating from them. So I'm going to use that for sure and I'm going to gather some of my colors that I'm going to make my dashed lines with. Now white's going to show up in a little bit when I do my watercolor. So I'm making dash lines. You can hear me tapping on the paper. It's okay to have overlapping lines. And it's okay to use several different colors. Now when you go to do the watercolor, of course, the watercolor will not stick to the wax. So it will only stick to where you still have paper showing. I'm also going to put a little bit of that cypress tree into my background. Started with a black crayon. Get some nice heavy lines in here and some texture. Maybe a little bit of green. Where'd my green crayon go? Kind of letting the texture lines follow the shape of the tree, just like these ones went around the moon and followed the shape of the moon. I think I'm going to finish up my tree with some blue lines because in the picture in Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night in the painting, the cypress tree is very, very dark. For the longest time when I was a kid about your age, I had no idea what that thing was. I thought it was a big black scary castle. Alright, I'm going to look at some more elements and finish drawing my background. Alright, the last thing that I wanted to do on my background 
was add a little bit of watercolor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to soften my colors. I think I'm going to use some violet and some blue in my sky. Maybe just a little bit of black too. Okay, so I've softened my colors. I have no paint on my brush. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to wet the paper. up a little bit of blue violet to start painting my sky. So I'm going to put a drop of water on my tray. Remember if you don't have paints that's okay. Use your crayons, your markers, your color pencils, whatever you have at home. So I put some blue up here and I'm going to take a little bit of violet because it's pretty strong. It's a powerful color and I've mixed it in. Now the water, of course, is going to help the paint spread out. And the paint will not stick to the crayon. So you'll still be able to see my stars, the swirls in the sky. You do have to make sure you have enough water on your brush. The wax is just repelling the water. It's not going to repel the paint if you don't have enough water in it. Okay, I have finished with my watercolor and it still has to dry, so I'm gonna set this aside for about 20 minutes. And I'm gonna work on my pumpkin that I will make pop out. So I have another piece of paper here, just a small little note card of the paper. And I'm going to start my pumpkin by drawing an oval. If you want to draw it in pencil first and then trace over your lines, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to go up to the top of the oval and I'm going to make a big letter C curve on the left side and the right side. I'm going to do one more on each side, I think. So you can see all my curves come together and touch the curve in front of it. I'm going to make my stem also. I'm going to start with brown for the stem because when the pumpkins get pretty big, their stems start to dry out. There's a good shape for my stem. I'm going to add just a little bit of green to it. I think that looks pretty nice. Alright, I'm going to put a shadow into my the bottom of my pumpkin and I'm going to use orange's complementary color. I know a pumpkin's orange, but I'm going to use the complementary color of blue. So you can see I've copied the U shape at the bottom of the oval I'm making the bottom of the shadow just a little bit thicker. I'm keeping these sides nice and thin and tight. So I'm going to do that on the other sections. These ones are going to be more V shaped than U shaped but the idea is still the same. I'm keeping the bottom a little bit thicker. We are going to cut these out, so if you go outside your lines a little bit, it's really not the end of the world. Everybody makes mistakes. Alright, so I have my shadows in there. Now I'm going to take my darkest orange. It's a red-orange color called Scarlet. And I'm going to actually blend it right into the blue. 
it's got a lot of red in it, so it's kind of making a pink, uh, purple color, a violet, when I mix them together. You can see I am coloring up just a little bit higher past the blue. And I'm going to color kind of lightly until I'm about not quite halfway up. But you can see here it's pretty solid. You can't really see any of the white paper. And then right in here it's a little bit more see-through. And you can see some of the white paper. And that will let me blend my next color into it. Alright, now that I'm done with my red orange, I'm going to take a lighter orange, so I have just a regular orange here, and I'm going to blend it in the, to the top of that red orange. Remember where I told you to color lightly? I'm going to color right into that. You can see I'm going pretty far down on the oval in the different sections. I'm going to come up almost all the way to the top. I'm going to go around the top. I'm going to leave a little bit of a white space though. There. So you can see I still have a white oval. I'm going to finish up my pumpkin with a little bit of yellow. I chose the dandelion yellow. I think it shows up a little bit better. I'm coloring into the edge of my orange and I'm going to leave a little white highlight on each section. So I have a little white spot right there. Now I need to cut my pumpkin out, so I'm going to try to cut right along the edge of the crayon. Okay, I've got my pumpkin cut out. My background is nice and dry. I'm going to refold it. And I think I want to have my pumpkin right about in the middle so it doesn't cover up too much of my house or church or too much of my cypress tree. So when I fold it up, I'm finding the middle right where that big space was. This is the fold side. Don't cut on the open side here. I'm going to make two cuts. One. Two. They're even like a number 11. I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to push my tab forward. So when I fold it in half again, there's a big rectangular cutout here. And it looks like I have a little chair. Can you see the little chair there? Now I just need one dot of glue to put my pumpkin on. The less glue, the better. There we go. I'm going to hold it on here. I have one finger on the back pushing forward. I have one finger on the bottom of the pumpkin and I'm gonna let that glue dry. And now I have a pretty cool Halloween pop-up card. All right, I didn't paint all of my, all of the bottom of my paper so I can take my scissors and I can trim that off. I'm just left with my Halloween scene. Don't forget to take a picture of your work 
um, open up the slide that I attached to the assignment, take a picture of the work and attach it to the slide.